double act. Um, so I'm Megan and I, we both work for Wentworth and Elsica Great Place. Um, I'm a heritage specialist and Dark is the art specialist, that's how we split ourselves. Um, so I'm going to do something quite traditional, I guess, tell you about an archaeological site. Um, and Dom's going to do something a little bit more exciting. So probably no pressure. <laughs> um, so we're a, a National Lottery and Arts Council funded project. We're a three year project. Uh, we're based across uh, Barnsley and Rotherham. So we're, we're situated within uh, Barnsley Council. Um, and we also have partners on our board who are also went with Woodhouse Preservation Trust. So this is where we work. We get to work in Oscar Heritage Centre. It's beautiful. Um, it's part of Barnsley Museums and it's an old ironworks. Um, this house at the bottom, if you don't know about it, you should, because it's amazing. This is Wentworth Woodhouse. This was, until recently, the largest <coughs> private, re private residency, residence um, sort of in, the, in the country. It's got the longest facade in Europe. It's twice as long, it's twice as long as Buckingham Palace, and it's in Rotherham. So it's secret, <laughs> nobody knows about it, but it's starting to come out. So the Preservation Trust now own it, and these are across our two sites. This is really important because the Earl Fitzwilliam uh, built uh, Wentworth Woodhouse and he also built the Ironworks at Elsica and he's going to also build the Ironworks that I'm about to tell you about. So that's why it's important. As part of our project we do lots and lots of things because we're um, National Artery funded and Arts Council funded um, we have to do something a little bit different which is, I like to use the word smush, we smush arts and heritage together. Everything we do that's heritage has to have arts in it, and everything that we do that is arts has to have heritage in it. They have to come together. You can't just do one without the other, which is something I think the arts do really, really well, but heritage doesn't do as well, necessarily. Um, so we're, try we're trying this, and it's working really, really well. So we did this guy here, managing, um, was one of our big events with 6,000 people across Elsica and Wentworth um, across a weekend to see this guy. Um, he's a giant puppet. Um, that was representing coal mining for us. Um, it was really evocative, lots of people said they got really emotional, there was people, grown men crying. Um, it was amazing, amazing two days. Um, so like this is one of our eyes, James Brunt. Um, he's a nature artist, he's creating the front of one of the uh, using pine cones, corks, natural things. Um, towards the Yorkshire Cave, um, that was our first big project. We worked with a textile artist and the Heritage Action Zone in Elsica. Um, who had lots of old pictures of Elsica and we decorated it sort of as it had been decorated in the past for coronations and jubilees and things like that. Um, so we lots of people dressed up, we have murals with our world famous Yukon Beam engine on it um, and a poem that one of our, acts in, uh, our poets and residents did and then obviously excavation is also at the heart of some of the stuff we do. So the, the site I'm going to tell you about is um, a place called Milton um, it's near Hoyland, so you can see the Wesley, Rotherham, Wakefield's further that way, uh, Doncaster a bit further that way. So it's bang in the middle of the two, the two areas. This is where it was, it's a recreation uh, field owned by Barnsley Council. It looks quite, it's quite misleading because it looks quite relaxing and there's lots of dog walkers walking around there. But in actual fact, what I'm about to tell you um, sort of makes a difference. So this project we did, we did an excavation, we worked with the um, Alaska Heritage Action Zone um, who are based who are within Alaska, our colleagues, um, and as part of the Heritage Action Zone, um, uh, Historic England came out and did some geophysics on the field in 2017. So this is the results of the geophysics. Um, this is just a massive pipe going through the middle of the site. There's some pretty fab houses up here which are really interesting, but we can't tell you about. <laughs> There's a pond here. Which you sort of see this little outline, and then these bits here, these anomalies, are the important bits. So that kind of gives you an indication that there's something already there. Now we know on this side there was an ironworks, and those are the remains of the ironworks that we're looking for. So <coughs> this is what it looked like. This ironworks was set up in 1790 by the Walker family of Rotherham. Uh, they were sort of really, really big iron masters within Rotherham. They were making, we've already heard about HMS Victory, they were making the cannons for HMS Victory, and they decided they wanted to open another ironworks. Elsica was already an ironworks at the time, and the Earl owned the land, and decided Elsica's doing so well, he'd support them and help them set up the Milton Ironworks. So Milton is named Milton, because the Earl Fitzwilliam's heir was known as Lord Milton. So it was named in honor of him. Uh, 
So they built this, it changed hands a couple of times, it eventually closed in the 80, 1833. I think this map is fairly early, um, early on in its life. And the important thing to know is this thing here. So this is the blast furnace marked on this map. So you can start as, oh, I took that one away. So we decided we're going to put three trenches in. Um, we did this with our heritage, we commissioned them to do the work. We put a trench in here. Um, and quickly backfilled that because there was nothing in it but 20th century rubbish. Um, we put a trench in here, looking for that blast furnace on the old maps. We went down two metres and still didn't hit natural. Um, <laughs> what we did get out of lot there was a lot of sort of um, 19th century tipping, basically. So we got some really, really amazing finds that people can, can touch and use um, and relate to, which is great. Uh, but we didn't find the blast furnace. And then we put in another trench just here. Um, that's an important trench. Because we found this thing here. So we, we ended up about across two weeks getting the digger out three times to keep extending the trench further and further. Um, and we didn't find something, yay! <laughs> because at the beginning of the two weeks we were a bit like, no, we're not going to find anything. Um, so that's the remains of the calcine um, kill. Uh, really important, it's not on any of the old maps. Um, they have to have one, they need to have one, um, and we found it. Um, and it was amazing, the amount of people that were just inspired by it. We had over 100 people participate in this. And I must stress that it was people who lived across the road, people <coughs> who were walking from site, who lived five minutes away. Those are the people who were engaging with the site. Um, we had over, uh, over 350 people visited on a day to day basis. Now, these were dog walkers walking their dogs every single morning, would come up to us at the same time every day. What did you find yesterday? <laughs> Have you found anything else? Just fascinated by it because this is where they walked their dog. They, didn't, they knew there was something there, their neighbours and iron worked, but they'd not seen any evidence of it. We had 55 school children take part from three different schools and from the Home Education Network. Um, over 150 people attended on the open day. So the open day was just a half day alongside uh, a gala that was happening anyway. And we had 150 people come. Um, and over 300 hours of excavation was given by volunteers. That's a huge amount of time. Um, but people kept coming back. They hadn't booked on. They're like, I just hope there's a space that I can, I can come and, and do some more digging. Um, and then I guess the, the other important thing is we had three artists in residence on site. That's why this is relevant to this session. And these are some of our artists. <laughs> um, this bit on the, the right is um, one of our artists, Luke, it's something he produced. He was fascinated with the idea of the, um, what we were finding um, and, and what it could mean. Um, and then Michelle uh, was our creative writer. She created a poem, she performed for us. Um, and James is a sound artist. And he was more fascinated in the sound of archaeology, not what was being found, but actually the sound that was being created by the tools we used, by what we're doing on site. And he produced an amazing composition uh, using the tools that, that we use to make noise, basically. Um, and it's amazing. Um, and you should, I haven't brought it with me, unfortunately, but it would have been good to play, play, play it for you. So I'm going to pass over to Dom, because Dom's going to do something a little bit creative now. Uh, <laughs> it's a confession, but I guess it's already out there. I'm not an archaeologist, okay? Um, I, I'll put my hand up to that. And if I'm really brutally honest, um, when Megan was telling me we're going to do a dig at Milton uh, for an ironworks, I thought, God, that sounds boring. <laughs> that sounds really boring. You're going to find a bit of a wall for something. It's going to be a report. It's going to go and be hidden away somewhere else. And, and it really did not spark my uh, interest. But we are, as Lara was talking, we're a placemaking project. Our project is very much about engaging people with their place. What was lovely about this project is it, um, it engaged people that were of that place, not removed from it. And they were as fascinated in the uh, Cindy and Barbie heads that were found, as opposed to important bits of uh, ceramic history that connected to that place. Um, we decided to experiment by putting three artists in, and uh, I guess I kind of give the remit, which was, Look, I want you just to respond through your practice, either to the process of the archaeology, what's going on, what you find, or indeed just something that happens there. They were given quite a free reign, really, and they were given a few days each to go and visit the site and to respond to it. And we also had a filmmaker, 
actually is another creative that I would say that was charting the process and used filmmaking to update people on a daily basis that couldn't access that site. But from my initial scepticism, uh, I had a realisation. My realisation was, uh, and I have a background as a site-specific performance maker, it's a durational performance. Gavin's just been showing it. It is making strange in a place. It is changing it from what it normally is. And you know what? I fell in love with it. It was a two-week dip. And um, I, it, it kind of, yeah, I guess it was uh, something maybe I'd given a bit of thought to, but it was a bit more of an epiphany to watch it. So those people that kept coming back, that you, they are your audience. They are people that are, um, in, in a sense, part of the place, part of its history in there. So I wanted to borrow, can I borrow some volunteers? Because it's the end of, it's Friday. You all wanted to go. Uh, I need you, Gavin, for the show. Can you just pop up here? Because uh, Gavin, if you could just pop that helmet on for me. That'd be perfect. Uh, and I need another volunteer. Honestly, God, there you go. Perfect. You're an archaeologist. How finished is that? An archaeologist, no prime base. And uh, because you work in partnership, you all wear one as an artist. Uh, I need someone else, I need some more volunteers. I need at least six, seven. Come on, jump up, mate. Quick, because I've been shown five minutes. There's a hat for you. Uh, I need archaeologist number two. It's well funded, this one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'll tell you what, and other people can just stand up because I'm going to give you some of this stuff. Right, uh, tell you what, you're going to be youth on a bike with some mates. Can you come and stand up here, please? Uh, I need you, and you are going to be. Doris, eight, seven and a half, always lived here. Okay, and can you be a dog walker? Can you come stand up for me? Uh, some other people, can I give you school? You look like a funder. Oh, archaeologist. There you go, archaeologist number one. Archaeologist number two. Uh, I need a volunteer, that means you have a time out of time. If I don't mention the house, I get shot. So they're even with the Herring Redaction Zone. Uh, who's, there, who's a good writer? Anyone? Anyone? There you go, you can be a poet. You can also have a drunk, please. Oh, there we go. Uh, can you do this uh, Oh, you thought I'd forgotten about you. There you go, go in, right? Blank, we can fill these in. Right, look, 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 look. What is amazing is we just we're making strings now. If I had time, I would drag it all outside and we would start messing around. That's what Gavin was doing earlier. He phrased it much better than that, but he was messing around, he was playing. That is an amazing thing. That's kind of what you're doing, okay? You wrap it up in other other stuff, but really you are out making strange in places, okay? Within that comes huge opportunity because. Look, you, you're lovely people, archaeologists, all right? You're really lovely people, but come here. You've gone a bike with some mates, okay? You come over here. <laughs> if I'm frank, he don't give a shit. He's just like, what are you doing? Have you found any dinosaur bones? He's probably going to ask. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then you're going to go, that's not an archaeologist. Uh, so look, how can we translate differently? How can we start to get more people interested? And, and Lara was showing it. That quote at the end was beautiful. It was this, I now feel a sense of understanding for place. That's what we want. Then people care. So if I can use people like, look, Gavin, if you could just run up and down there, making a loud noise for me, Gavin. <laughs> that's what artists do, that's what you're all thinking. <laughs> Perfect. You've got the bikes going, what's going on? Look at that, man. What's Man, you are, and you're like, well, I am that, I'm an artist, and I've just created my amazing sonic performance that is happening for 24 hours straight. But you know what? Why are you doing it? Because there's a dig going on. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, and do you know what? You've got a bike just come over and he's like, what do you mean a dig? What do you mean? You've got to start translating. Or our artists are going to start translating. Or our volunteering. You know what, dog walk, it keeps coming back every day. It's almost like they need to walk the dog. So, <laughs> funders, you see a new audience. Are you excited about very, that? Very excited. And, and, and a poet, they're, honestly, they're loving this. I'll let you into a little secret about artists, okay? Artists love old stuff. 
They loved the crack. In fact, you loved falling down. You saw Gavin. He was swooning over his own images. <laughs> <laughs> so was I. And every time we take people into Wentworth Woodhouse, especially artists, because how it's falling down, they're in love with it. They also love data. They love processes. They love stories. You're storytellers, okay? There are different ways to tell stories, okay? We can tell them in a shit way. We can tell them in an exciting way. We can tell them in different ways. If I put one of Gavin's schools there, I'm up, I would be over there. I would be. Other people would be going, what's going on with that? It is an opportunity. And I guess what we're excited about, we only look, experiment a little bit in this, but we're about to, we can get permission, okay? Uh, it's a national monument. We're gonna embed artists throughout the whole process, the whole process from beginning to end and informing it. Because that exchange, is really exciting. It's exciting for the artist, it's exciting for hopefully the archaeologist, it's exciting for the funders. It's mostly, where are you going? Our oh, community slash audience. This really is an opportunity to reach a much more diverse range of people, to get them to take ownership of it, to, for it not to be a lovely, well done report that sits somewhere in an office that means sod all to Dog Walker and uh, <laughs> Youth on a Bike and Doris. Doris, Doris, you know what? Because she sees some weird stuff going on, <laughs> and this happened because on a Milton there was there was no um, there was no uh, photos or images of the Milton Ironworks. Well, that was a lie because a guy rocked up and he rocked up with a couple of images that then people are arguing about whether it is, but that's what's written on them. So. This idea of you make it, every time you do something outdoors, in fact, even the collaboration Lara, Lara was showing earlier, it is something that people are curious in. And actually, if you try and chug them archaeology, you know, like the people that are coming up sign you up, people are resistant, now you're all right, it's not for me, okay? If you make strange, if you make something happen, people are curious, and they want to know. So you found a bike over there with his mates, <laughs> what are you doing there? What are you doing? Okay, and suddenly Gavin's like, well, I always rock out this helmet, and it's just how I roll, and I like to do it in a creative, sonic way. Um, so, look, this is a little bit of fun, but I guess the message is quite a serious one. And, look, we're not reinventing the wheel, but what's been lovely to hear from the other two talks, and there are other examples, actually, um, is there are real opportunities. They are not disconnected. Art and archaeology are not separate. When we separate things, um, it's kind of like you miss, you miss opportunities in there. The, in, the natural interdisciplinary nature of that crossover is really exciting. It might go wrong, I think Gavin said that, or it might not work, okay? But actually you're taking a risk and something really exciting might happen. And the fact that people kept coming back and wanting to know more and engaging with it. And we had our heritage were working with us on there. They'd not known artists go in there. They'd not known this uh, level of kind of conversation and engagement from uh, people that were perceived unengaged with it. So I guess that's the message to take away is this, there is exciting possibilities here. And somebody rightly might go, oh, I can't pay for no bloody artists. I can only have one archaeologist. Um, there are funding opportunities. You know, I, I, I guess I know the art side of it a bit more, but you know, I, I, uh, grants for the arts, arts council, working with artists, you'd probably be biting your hand off if you're engaging new audiences. You'd probably be able to access decent funding to make really interesting <laughs> projects happen. So look, I'm fighting the clock here a little bit, and uh, it is a bit of a provocation that hopefully complements the other two. But go away and have some fun, mess around. You know, think how can you if, you, if if we all own these places and this stuff, there is a responsibility for us to, uh, to why do we engage with it? Because that, that idea that, um, and again, I think Gavin mentioned it, this exclusive, if it's exclusive, there's only a certain elite that can have an ownership and touch these things. It's disconnected, and, and actually it's not very equal, and actually it, it, people will not be there to support your sector or the projects that are going on. But actually, if you show that this is an amazing way to let people connect with their stories, with their place, with its history, with new stories that are discovered from it, 
then, then there's something really exciting to be happened. And, and actually, what was really lovely within that day, and, and uh, were, there were people that were volunteering for that that had never done it, that weren't interested, but actually kept coming back. You know, a young or a kind of teenager, slightly autistic lad, was sold from it, going away wanting to be an archaeologist, coming to the, 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 uh, the showing of it, wanting to know more, people wanting to know what was going on in it. They took ownership of it, and that is a really exciting and powerful thing. Uh, I'm aware of time. Thank you very much. Thank you for the